Okay, this unit really quick. It's the letters G and H, and we've already gone over all of the, the letters. Um, now we're just sort of playing with them in words. She's going to give uh, the coaching on how to use G and H. Now, um, you're going to see a lot that people are going to push you to go G forward and H forward. That is technically how they should be. Um, as an interpreter, we oftentimes will do sideways G and H because it's clearer. Um, uh, since you're just starting out, don't be so concerned. People are going to correct you. Just go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Accept it. Um, once you start fingerspelling at speed, it's going to be much more natural to go out front. But it doesn't always happen like that. Like some people don't, don't sign Thursday this way. They sign Thursday this way. So um, there are times when it's appropriate and times when it's not necessary. She's going to give you some coaching in the video um, at a nice pace and very clear. So these, we're going to fingerspell words, and then I've got a, a grid of, I think, 24 different um, words that incorporate G and H. So the one thing I want to push you towards is now that you've got the letters memorized, ideally, you can fingerspell these words without thinking about the letters too much. Um, if you are, you need to work on it. Because by the end of ASL2, if you can't fingerspell, you're not going to do well. It's one of those skills that you just have to have. So once you've graduated from G-R-A-C-E, and hopefully you're not G-R-A-C-E, don't do that. If it helps, just a, a slight touch so that your hand doesn't move. Um, start to think about the entire word, especially if it's a one-syllable word. Be able to finger spell the entire syllable. Grace. Grace. Okay. You want to get to that point. Now notice also that grace, every word, every name, has a shape inherent to its letters. And that is really what we pay attention to. Because you're going to start to pay you're going to start to recognize the movements between letters. And you're going to, that will be, that will be your cue more so than the individual letters. If you're getting stuck behind, oh, what was that middle letter? You're lost. But you know, Wheel of Fortune style, if a letter's missing from a word, you can usually figure out from context what that word is. So I recommend playing Wheel of Fortune. It's the best, it's some of the best practice for fingerspelling because you get used to filling in the blanks without even thinking about it, without even hesitating. So Grace, G goes up to the R, down to the A, a little forward for C, and then back down for E. Grace, grace, right? So do it slow, don't go for speed, go for smoothness. If there are two letters that are hard to get to, you know, to go from one to the other, go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it's smooth. Smoothness is always better. Speed will come. You don't always just want speed. Gale, G-A-Y-L-E. G, it's almost open to like the side. You turn to A, spread out for Y, up for L, and down for E. Gale. Oh, Dorothy Gale. G-A-Y, it almost, it opens up, G-A-Y. It's like an opening door. Gale. So it go so it opens, goes up and back down. Okay. So those are the shapes. Doug D O U G. It's easy to spell dog, right? D O U G. D O U G. Holly, H O L L, and a little slide down to a Y. Holly. Kind of like Larry. Hope. H O, so H is a little to the side, O, drop down to the P, up to the E. Hope. F Philip. P starts down, turns to the side for H, up for I, to the side L L, up a little bit, and then drop down to the P. Philip. So you're starting to see there's that like it's like you're drawing a shape in the air. Sometimes it reminds me of like Arabic, how there's that flowing script. Um, 
that's what you want to be thinking of for your finger spelling. You're going to get to that point and that shows skill. That shows that you know what you're doing. If you're constantly like, um, one of the comments that a, a student who has dyslexia said is that finger spelling names and finger spelling syllables really helped because then they weren't thinking about letters. They were thinking about a movement and they could remember movements. They couldn't remember letters and those kind of symbols. So, I don't believe there's any studies out yet to show the benefits or the drawbacks or anything like that. But I have had students tell me that for them, this helped. So now uh, we're gonna go through a bunch of names. Um, she's gonna go through 10 names, just write down what the name she finger spells. And there are the answers. Then more common words to finger spell, just some practice. Um, First, I was like, do they all have G and H? Yes, they do. Okay, so just some good ones to practice. Any words are good to practice. Um, make a list of words with different letter combinations that are in your life every day. Names, stuff like that. Just You just have to practice. And it's easy when we're online to skip that stuff. And again, I couldn't put all of them on here. So G and H, really short 